As of fall 2021, Seneca College is no longer going to support Blackboard Collaborate. So we might as well delete anything that we had for this because we're going to have to now move to some new way of doing things. And the best way to do this is using Zoom. So what you're going to do is you're going to go up here, you're going to go down to Tool Link, you're going to say Zoom Meeting, and under Type we're going to go down here and scroll right to the bottom and go to Zoom meeting and we're going to make this available to all users and we can slide it wherever we want. I'm just going to put it here. So when we go to Zoom meeting uh, here's what's going to happen. It's going to go here and it's going to say launch LTI and this is extra security and some of the things holding you back from using this extra security will be not having pop-ups allowed in your web browser. So we're going to take a look next at all the different web browsers and how to make sure that this is enabled so you will allow a pop-up to happen for this to get this extra security. Now let's start with Firefox which is a browser common to most operating systems and when we get to this point here after launching Zoom when we hit this it's going to come up and say for improved security and that's what we want. So to get this improved security let's close this for now and let's go back and take a look at Firefox. So we're going to go to Firefox Preferences and we're going to go to Privacy and Security and we're going to scroll down here to Permissions. Now under Permissions it's got Block Pop-up Windows and we're going to hit Exceptions and we're going to add the address which is HTTPS colon two forward slashes applications dot zoom dot us and this is going to be the same for all of our web browsers. Now to make sure that this is going to stick, we're going to hit Allow, which is going to add it to the list of websites that are going to be allowed to use pop-ups, and then we're going to say Save Changes. Now if we go back to Firefox here, and we go back to Zoom Meeting, and this time when we launch, it's going to go right into Zoom with that extra security where we can then schedule a new meeting and continue on. Now I'm going to show you briefly how to do this for Safari, Edge, and Chrome. It's a little different in Safari because we say preferences down here and we slide all the way to the bottom where it says pop-up windows allow pop-up windows on websites below so these have to be currently open websites so it's strange you have to get to the website to allow pop-ups so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go to zoom meeting and we're going to say launch and then we're going to redirect by clicking here to Zoom. Now you can do this, but it's not going to give you the extra security. So now if we go to Safari, and again we go down to Preferences and go to Pop-up Blockers, what we can see here is applications.zoom.us is here, and we can go down here and just say Allow. Now if we just get out of this, let's close these down, and let's go now to Zoom Meeting and hit Launch it gives us that extra security and again we're in Zoom here. Now if we try with Chrome we can see again that if we do Zoom meeting and you say launch you're going to get this same message as we've seen before. We're going to have to go down to preferences, we're going to have to go to privacy and security, we're going to go to site settings and we're going to scroll down here to where it says pop-ups and redirects blocked and go in here and we can add to allow just applications.zoom.us and we say add and from now on when we go here back to our Zoom meeting and we click here again we're in Zoom with the extra protection. Okay when you use Microsoft Edge here you go up to the right hand part of the screen and hit these three dots and you go down to settings. Under settings you're going to find cookies and site permissions. You're going to add that to here so when we add it to here and go back we're going to find that it works properly and that's all I have to do for the Edge browser. Now at this point we've dealt with all the browser issues so we do have LTI when we go in to our Zoom meeting and notice we have our course here called Microcontroller Concepts. Now it could be any name for any course and you're going to see that this is going to be picked up by Zoom. Now if we click on the meeting and we go to LTI as we said before it's going to launch into this. Now when you try and schedule a new meeting if you haven't got Zoom downloaded it's going to ask you to do that. One of the things you'll see here that microcontroller concepts or whatever course that you're actually launching this from will appear as your topic here. Now I'm just going to leave this 
uh, date and time. You would set it to your own date and time for the meeting that you've got. I'm going to leave it for one hour. Make sure you've got uh, Eastern time, U.S. and Canada because that's where Seneca is. Now, one thing that you should be aware of here is you don't want to have it have a waiting room. It says only users admitted by the host can join the meeting. And think about this. If you've got a large class and every time somebody shows up, you have to click and to go away from what you're doing, click to let them in, and then they randomly show up and you're going to be doing that your whole class. And if you're recording, it's going to be a real mess. So it's better not to have the waiting room. And we want to make sure we mute participants on entry because we don't want them making a noise. And the other thing is our video here, we want to shut that off for both. And the reason for this is the bandwidth that this uses up is immense, especially if you have a class like I do of about 70 or 80 people. So we're just going to save this. And what we can do right now is then just right mouse click, copy link back here to full grade center and mail that link to everybody. Let's go back to our meeting and uh, start it so that they'll have something to come into. Now, do you want this to open up and we can say allow and away it goes. Now, this again is assuming that you've got Zoom set up and already installed on your computer. And you'll notice right now we've got participants one, which means it's just me. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen as somebody logs in and give you an idea of how to actually start sending information to your screen using the share screen command here. Now, when the person gets their email, they're going to get a link like this with a passcode. They're just going to tap on it. It's going to go into Zoom. It's going to say join a meeting. It's going to say waiting. And this is the important thing you have to do here. Never touch no audio as a student. Hit Wi-Fi. Those are your only two choices. Otherwise, you won't be able to hear anything that's going on that the instructor is going to say. Now, let's get a little bit more familiar with our screen. And if we click on this little green check mark, it tells us there's the name of the course, there's the meeting ID, I'm the host, there's the passcode and a bunch of other stuff, and this is the link that you can copy. Now over here, if I go here it says unmute. If I go over here it says ask to unmute, because this is me, because I can unmute myself. But over here a student has to ask to unmute, right? And I'm just going to hit share screen. And right now I'm pulled up here from my work drive here. Uh, this where this is the first part of the video that we just saw. Now for people to actually hear it on their device, we can go here and we can say share sound and stereo high quality. And at this point, if I was to play the video, every student would be able to hear it. But notice here I'm still muted, which means the sound is coming from the actual video that I'm displaying. Or you can also go back here and you can turn off sharing sound. So when you're not sharing sound, then you can actually go here and unmute and say, hi there, and be able to con conduct the class normally. But this is a very quick introduction as to how you can share information very quickly and get your students into the class very quickly and use very similar things to what you're using in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra without having to spend a lot of time learning all the ins and outs. So we've looked at the very simple way of getting in and because of LTI you don't need to add that extra security which is available if you want to do that.